Hey everyone, welcome to Mad Backyard. Today we're gonna to be making some smoked macaroni and cheese. You can make this recipe on any smoker, pellet smoker, or even a grill set up with indirect heat. Today, we're gonna to be using our Pit Boss Pellet Grill. While we usually think of smokers for cooking our meat or our seafood, they're also great for making side dishes, especially when you can just throw them on alongside the meat and cook everything at the same temperature. We're gonna be smoking our macaroni and cheese today at 270 degrees on our Pit Boss because that's a pretty common temperature for smoking a lot of other barbecue. But you could just as easily smoke it anywhere from 220 degrees all the way up to 325 degrees, depending on what else you have cooking. That's what makes smoked macaroni and cheese such a convenient side dish to prepare on the smoker. For the pellets, we're using knotty wood plum. They burn evenly and have a nice smoke flavor. If you're using a pellet grill, fill the hopper with pellets, start it up, let it run through the startup cycle, and then set it to 270 degrees. When we first developed this recipe, we started with a classic one from Ina Garten, and then we made a few changes to suit our tastes, as well as keep it from drying out on the smoker. We start by boiling one pound of elbow macaroni just until it is al dente, so not fully softened. For our brand of macaroni, this was just five minutes in salted boiling water. The pasta will still feel very firm, but it'll soak up the cheese sauce and soften more while we cook it on the smoker. The time may vary depending on the size and thickness of your pasta. You don't have to use elbow macaroni, other shapes of pasta will work just as well. Drain the pasta, put it back in the pot, and then drizzle a little bit of olive oil over it and mix it up. This will prevent the macaroni from clumping up and sticking together. Now you can set the cooked macaroni aside, off the heat, and start the cheese sauce. Before we get started on the sauce, we need to shred our cheese. We're going to be using a combination of Gruyere and sharp cheddar cheese, but you can use whatever kind of cheese you prefer. For even more smoky flavor, you could try cold smoking your cheese to use in the recipe, but the most important thing is not to use pre-shredded cheese. Pre-shredded cheese has lots of anti-caking agents in it that keep the cheese from clumping and sticking together inside the bag, but unfortunately those same ingredients also keep the cheese from melting as easily. So get a block and shred it yourself. When grating large quantities of cheese like this, we like to use a rotary cheese grater. This one's got this nice locking mechanism that helps it stick to the table so it doesn't move around on you. And you can literally grate like a pound and a half of cheese in under a minute. It comes with three blades, a slicing blade, a coarse grating blade, and a fine grating blade. Today we're going for a coarse grate. Shred about eight ounces of Gruyere and 16 ounces of sharp cheddar plus an extra two ounces or about half a cup to set aside for later. Now that we have our macaroni noodles cooked and our cheese grated, we can get started on the sauce. The best way to cook smoked mac and cheese is in a good cast iron skillet. Not only do you get a nice presentation, but you can carry it straight from the smoker to the table in the hot skillet and the mac and cheese will stay nice and warm and melty for a long time. Our recipe we're using today is designed for a standard 12 inch cast iron skillet. I'll put a link to the one we're using today down in the description below. The first step to the cheese sauce is to make a roux, which is made by mixing butter and flour. First melt a stick of butter, then whisk in a third cup of all-purpose flour and whisk continuously for about three to four minutes over medium heat. Next it's time to add the seasoning. We're adding half a tablespoon of dry mustard because it pairs really well with cheese. My wife uses dry mustard in her beer cheese soup and it's really good. We're also adding one tablespoon of kosher salt and some freshly ground pepper. Slowly pour in four cups of whole milk, a very little bit at a time, whisking constantly to incorporate it completely. It should start off as a thick paste and slowly get thinner and smoother as you add a little bit of milk at a time and whisk continuously. This type of white sauce is referred to as a bechamel, and after we add the cheese, it will be a spin on a Mornay sauce, a French cheesy cream sauce. Let it come to a simmer over medium high heat and keep whisking for another eight to 10 minutes until the sauce thickens. This is one of the most important steps in the whole process, so don't rush it. The goal is to get the flour to cook and dissolve and become a thickening agent so that the sauce is smooth and not gritty. You can feel free to customize the seasoning for your smoked mac and cheese. Some people like to grate a little nutmeg or use some garlic or smoked paprika. You can also add a little Worcestershire sauce if you want a little extra color and flavor. So feel free to have fun with it. Next, we're gonna add the cheese. Remove the pan from the heat. The cast iron should be plenty hot enough to melt the cheese at this point. You wanna do this part slowly as well by adding just one handful of cheese at a time. Only add more cheese once that handful is melted in into the sauce. Keep adding the cheese in small quantities until you've melted all the cheese into the sauce. Now that the cheese sauce is finished, it's time to combine it with the cooked macaroni. We find the easiest way to do it is to pour the cheese sauce over the macaroni in the large stock pot, mix it around, and then transfer it back to the cast iron pan. By now the smoker should be up to temperature. To infuse more smoke flavor into our mac and cheese, we're gonna be lighting up a firebox with some wood chunks as well. 
If you haven't watched our video on how to make a small firebox to get more real wood smoke flavor in your pellet grill, you're missing out. I'll put a link to it up here and down in the description below. It makes a big difference in the amount of smoke flavor you get when cooking on your pellet grill. Today I'm going to use some apple wood chunks, but you can use whatever you like. Any fruit wood will work great. And if you want a stronger smoke flavor, go with hickory or mesquite. Place the cast iron directly on the grates and close the lid. Gently stir the mac and cheese after about 15 minutes. This will help infuse more smoke flavor throughout the whole dish and also prevent the top from drying out too quickly and forming a barrier that prevents the smoke from getting through. While the mac and cheese is smoking, we're gonna make our panko topping. Panko breadcrumbs are Japanese style breadcrumbs that are larger and more flaky than other types of breadcrumbs. We like using them because we find they make for a crispier topping on our smoked mac and cheese. This topping is completely optional, but we found that we really like the extra texture of the crunchy panko and the barbecue rub flavor we use. Toast half a cup of panko breadcrumbs with two tablespoons of butter over medium heat until they're golden brown. Then stir in one tablespoon of your favorite barbecue rub. One of our favorites is Three Little Pigs Kansas City Championship Rub, so that's what we're using today. After 30 minutes of smoking the mac and cheese, sprinkle the extra half cup of cheddar cheese and the toasted panko on top and cook for another 30 minutes. So one hour total cooking time at 270 degrees Fahrenheit. Just adjust your cooking time depending what temperature your smoker is. And use your instant read thermometer to tell you when it's ready. You'll want the inside to be about 170 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit so that it's nice and hot throughout. This looks so good. Let's take a taste and see how it came out. The noodles are perfectly cooked. The key is undercooking them before you add the cheese sauce and put them in the smoker. The sauce is incredibly creamy. It's not gritty at all because we took our time really cooking that flour in the beginning when we were making our sauce. It's got a really nice smoky flavor and that cheese and the uh, panko breadcrumbs on top with that three little pig seasoning mixed in just adds that extra level of texture and flavor and it's just all around really, really good. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. You can find the step-by-step -step recipe that accompanies this video at madbackyard.com. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. On our website, you can find lots of other great Pit Boss resources, as well as some more side dish recipes you might enjoy, such as our smoked cornbread and smoked mashed potatoes. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey everyone, welcome to Mad Backyard. Today we're going to be smoking some mac and mac and... This topping is completely optional, but we find that the extra texture from the panko breadcrumbs, as well as the barbecue rub flavor we use, goes a long way in something something. All right. This topping is completely optional, but we found that we really like the crunchy texture of the panko breadcrumbs. <laughs> this topping is completely optional, but we find that we really like the extra crunchy texture from. Jeez. This topping is completely optional, but we found that we really like the extra texture of the panko crunchy panko. This topping is completely optional, but we found that we really. <laughs> This topping is completely optional, but we found that we really like the extra texture of the crunchy panko. I think I got it on the other one.